This video is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, and the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Hey guys, this is from Dr. Long's exam review study guide for exam 2, and this is problem 16. Problem 16 asks you to calculate the free energy change transporting one mole of sodium ions across the plasma membrane. Now, you may know the equation to, to calculate the free energy change right off the bat, but it's useful to know what's going on visually. So, what I have drawn over here is a plasma membrane with different concentrations of sodium and uh, on either side of the membrane. And we were told that in the blood plasma you have a higher concentration of sodium than in the cytosol. And we're moving the sodium, the mole of sodium ions, up across from the cytosol to the plasma membrane. So we understand that the sodium is going against its concentration gradient. Sodium from the plasma actually wants to go into the cytosol but we're actually forcing it in the other direction. So what does that mean? The cell has to put work into the system in order for sodium to be transported into the plasma membrane. So that means in terms of the Gibbs free energy equation, we should be expecting a positive answer. And the reason for that is because positive always means that the reaction or the process in question is non-spontaneous, meaning it's not gonna happen by itself on its own. So whatever answer you get, regardless of the magnitude, we should be expecting a positive answer. So if you end up doing your calculations and you get negative, then you did something wrong. You need to check to see if it was a math error or you accidentally added a negative or something. So in addition to that, we were also given a variety of different values for different variables. Uh, as far as the equation is concerned, we have most of the values. Uh, it either requires conversion or where it's already given. So for example, R and F are given values that are constants that never change. And you would be likely to you would likely be given these values on the exam should you have to calculate these sorts of problems. R is equal to 8.315, F is 96,480. Um, and we were also given a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, a membrane potential, delta psi, of negative 0.07 volts, and concentrations. So in any of these kind of problems, you need to make sure the units are correct. Uh, in temperature, we need them in Kelvin. We were given 37 degrees in Celsius. So what you do is you add simply 273 to it, and you should get 310 Kelvin. Likewise, we need delta psi in volts. And we, thankfully, we were given the value in volts. But in, in some times, you might be given in millivolts. And if that's the case, you need to convert it. Um, now, in our concentrations, we were given millimoles. And while the equation itself uses moles, it doesn't matter because the concentrations themselves uh, will cancel out because we're going to be using them as the ratio. So a concentration divided by a concentration. If you had like moles divided by moles, the units would obviously cancel out. So in this case, it doesn't matter that we convert these two values from millimoles to moles. We just need to make sure that they're both in the same units. Now if one, for example, like C1, if that was given in 12 moles and the other was in millimoles, we need to convert one or the other so that the units are the same. And, like, and the last thing we didn't really quite get a value for was Z. And Z represents the charge of the ion in question. Since we're dealing with sodium ions, they always have a plus one charge. So Z is just simply one. And now if it was calcium, we would know it would be two, and so on and so forth. You can do it for all of these different ions. So now that we have all of our values in the correct format, we can just go ahead and plug them into the equation. So delta G is, e is free energy, and that equals R, which is 8.315, times 
times temperature, which is 310 Kelvin. And then the natural times the natural log of C2 over C1. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning was, how do you know if C1 should be 12 millimoles or 145? The way you figure it out is thinking about where you start and where you want to end up. So remember, we're trying to go move sodium ions from the cytosol into the blood plasma. So your starting position, which is the cytosol, is going to be C1. And the blood plasma is going to be C2. And so we know that in the cytosol, or inside the plasma membrane, we, should, we have 12 millimoles. Because it's, we know that in the cytosol, it's supposed to be less, uh, there's supposed to be less sodium ions than in the blood plasma. So C1 is for the concentration in the cytosol, C2 is for the blood plasma. Hence, you have these values coordinated. So C2 is 145 divided by 12. And then now we have to add the last part. Let me just erase that real quick. Plus 96,480 times 1 times delta psi, which is 0 0.07 volts. Now, I know that the problem give, gave you uh, delta psi and negative, but really the negative doesn't mean anything in terms of this equation because we're only looking at the net change in voltage, which, uh, the, or the net change in energy per unit of charge. And so the direction, the, the sign itself tells you the direction. If any of you have taken physics, you'll, know, you'll understand that. But as far as the problem is concerned, we're only interested in the raw change of energy. So the positive doesn't mean, or the negative doesn't mean anything if you drop it out. Given that we have this, uh, we can just go ahead and calculate it out now. And you should get a delta G value of 13.2 kilojoules per mole. Now, you're not going to get your answer in kilojoules. I just simply converted it ahead of time, just so you guys, so the numbers are uh, easier to manage and I have a uh, limited amount of uh, real estate to write these. But you should get it in joules, so you should, you should get an answer in addition to three zeros. Uh, but if the amp, if on a multiple choice exam, if you're if all the answers are given in joules, then just leave it in joules. It'll be easier for you to figure it out. But at this point, this is the net energy change we should expect per mole of uh, ions, sodium ions. We were given one mole of sodium ions, so we just need to calculate the change for one mole. And so that's 13.2 kilojoules per mole times one mole of sodium. And so the moles cancel out, and you should just get 13.2 kilojoules. That was a bad okay. And so again, this is the amount of free energy change that's required to pump sodium ions against this concentration gradient over here. And again, we have a positive answer, so we know that our prediction was correct. Um, so a few pointers, just when you're trying to tackle these problems, make sure the units are the same, and try, if you can ahead of time, predict what the sign will be. And those two facts will help you out in trying to calculate these sorts of problems. Thanks guys, hope it helps. Good luck on your exam.